Okay, welcome back to uh, my, like, welcome back to the channel, my Minimax 1100R build. And uh, so I made my trip to uh, Aircraft Spruce this morning and I was able to pick up what is really the, it's the rest of my aluminum. Um, it's my uh, strut tubes. Um, this aluminum is for uh, making the uh, kind of the roll cage part of the uh, windshield. Um, this is for the the uh, tail tubes. Um, this one is for the spark carry through um, that goes in the fuselage um, and various other pieces that are all part of the uh, landing gear. I got um, picked up um, my facet pump um, so I can get a mounting block uh, in place for that. I'm using the Posi Flow um, pump so. It's for um, basically one, one to two PSI um, is the one that I've chosen. So I think that'll work out really well for, for the half, uh, half VW engine. And uh, just got some uh, phosphate primer for kind of the control stick aluminum and the other aluminum things that are inside the fuselage. Uh, rivets for windshield roll bar assembly I, and needed some more um, some 20 A's for some of the assemblies that are coming up picked up the piece that I needed um, the right angle for the uh, gas escalator so we can continue that process some other screws and um, yeah just the normal the normal stuff you need um, there was a couple of I needed a one foot piece of a particular aluminum that was on back order. Um, I needed a little bit of uh, 2024 T4. Um, I need about six inches of that, but I think I may have a six inch piece left over from where I made the, the wing brackets. Um, so I'll take a look and see if I've got that. Um, but that I ordered some more, but it was on back order. So but that was the only two items today, which is actually really good. I mean, there's been a back order problem in general lately it seems like every time I order something part of the order is on on back order so this um, the stuff we have now um, takes us all the way to the point where we need to order covering material so um, so there's nothing standing in the way at the moment except for me talking so um, let's uh, let's build something and so I think what we'll do is work on Work on these hinges first before we before we move on to working on um, going back to the gas glider. All right, cool. All right, so one of the uh, one of the first things we got to do is get uh, get our hinges um, marked out where we need to drill our three sixteenths holes. So um, we are. Um, Three quarters from the edge and then an inch and a half apart is the uh, setup so so we'll come up three quarters and we'll mark that it's going to be there Then we might as well uh, drill all of these at the same time, so. They're all the same. and a half apart and we'll see what that distance gives us from the other edge. Alright, we'll just mark those lines straight across.
Alright, then we're a half inch off the center line. So we'll see what that uh, looks like. Should put it about in the center of a uh, in the center of this tang right here. Which is about right. It's about a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> Now we'll mark our the hole locations on these. Alright, just going to double check that real quick, um, make sure that's falling in the center of the, uh, in the center of the spars. So. Plus a couple of uh, 0.8 millimeter shims, uh, which actually go in behind there. Um, Alright, that actually looks really good. So. spaces out nicely so we're gonna go with that what I was really concerned about was that was just making sure that these weren't too far um, too far to one side or the other to get too close to the edge but they're both very much near the exact center with that spacing in there um, so the measurement we were looking for was a half an inch off the center line which is about right there. So we should be right on that mark. Yeah. Let's just pick that up a little right at the center line. All right, so I'll get the rest of these marked and uh, then we'll hit the drill press and we'll get them all drilled out. And I think at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and mark up the uh, hinges for the, uh, um, the hinges for the rudder pedals. And we'll get those uh, drilled while we've already got everything all set up here. So I'll get that done as well. All right, let me get these all marked out and then we'll, uh, we'll drill some holes. Now that I've got uh, now I've got the holes drilled in the hinges, 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill um, drill through my uh, pedal, and the hinge goes like this. It sits on the bottom of the pedal, and so you just push it up against there. I'll drill a hole. And then I will I'll pin that one with a screw. Um, so that I can't move around. And then I'll flip around to the other side. Pin that one. And drill the center one. All right, since it's important to keep the orientation of these um, correct, this is the uh, left pedal. So we're gonna put uh, um, left pedal, pedal, and left pedal floor. Just make some marks on the back side of the hinge so I don't lose track of where they actually go. Um, so this one goes on the pedal, this one will be drilled for the floor so that everything matches later. And since we have that much there, we can actually we can actually just go ahead and uh, run these through. All right, now we can get to uh, just go ahead and put these together. So that's on the pedal side, and we're going to put a washer under that. Could have just as easily used a number eight screw, um, but uh, I've got, I get a lot of my hardware from from McMaster Car, and uh, since I purchased um, more than enough number 10s, um, then I'm gonna use number 10s, so. Torque off these. Okay, it's one pedal. There you go. And now we'll uh, we'll drill the other one. Um, get that one on, and we'll just repeat that same process. All right, so now I got all the hinges made. Um, um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just getting. What I want to know here is where my hinge slot needs to be, so um, I'm just kind of uh, getting these in position where they belong and 
basically the bottom corner of this hinge comes to the very bottom of the rudder. So I know where this one goes. And then I'm just going to uh, uh, just draw a couple lines here. Um, just so I can, s so I kind of know where, where to go with my hinge slot. So they're there and there and here and here. And then uh, we'll go up to this one and do the same. And it just goes to the, it's basically centered on this uh, member here, kind of to the top and the bottom of it. So I'm just doing the same basic thing for that one. Um, it's, it's, this one's a little easier, it's really there. And I'll give myself just a little bit of margin um, when I do this. So now that I've got those marked, I can uh, just release my, just had some gentle clamp pressure here, just to keep it from moving while I got that marked. And now we can flip these up and actually carry those marks um, off, to, uh, off to the sides here. So it's gonna be there and there, it's gonna be there and there, and down here. It's going to be about here and here, here and here, and we'll actually go outside these marks just a little bit. And then we just have to do the same, do the same on the rudder. It's going to be right there and almost all the way to the bottom here. Um, so that one will go there. This one is here. stop dropping it it'd be a lot easier here and here so now I'll get to, uh, I'll get something and draw the center line um, in each of those locations and it looks like maybe I've got to clean up a little of epoxy here first so I'll do that and um, then I'll get a center line drawn um, in each of those actually it's not a center line let me rephrase that the hinge is actually, it's actually, let me show you this on the drawing here, it's a half an inch, one side of the hinge is a half an inch from one side of the, uh, uh, <clears throat> from the spar. So, so what we'll have to do is, um, we'll have to drill, um, we'll, well, we'll have to make, uh, we'll come a half an inch from one side, and then we will, uh, draw a 16th inch um, we'll use the hinge itself um, to try and figure out exactly uh, kind of what the width is we're dealing with and uh, yeah then I'll, then we'll show you the next uh, we'll show you the next part of this all right I just wanted to point out one thing that um, that I needed to do just to make sure that um, you don't lose track of this uh, it's important to to get um, your half inch marks where your half inch um, are from this from the same side so you can see here when you look at this if I fold it over um, I'm measuring from a half let me fold it all the way over so I'm measuring a half from here to here and from here to here and the same down there because when they made up um, that's where the uh, that's where the half inch ends up. Um, both from both from this side. So that's important to keep track of that. You don't want to you don't want to accidentally uh, make that from both sides. So um, that would be uh, um, well. You just fill it in with something and work your way back through it. So it wouldn't be like the end of the world, but it would be double work for sure. So. Um, anyway, since I've got that um, assured, I feel good about that, I'm going to, um, now I'm going to make my 16th inch, uh, or it's actually, I mean, it is really about a 16th of an inch, but it's, um, my hinge material is uh, 0.060, so it's just slightly under, but when I draw a line, 
using my hinge, I'm going to actually end up um, at the size I need to be. So I'm going to put my I'm going to put my hinge on the line here. Use a little longer piece here, and all I'm doing is I'm going to put the hinge here. Then I'm going to use the I'm going to use the hinge to mark the uh, the edge of the hinge to mark the other side, since that's the width that we're going for. So now you can actually see the uh, slot line that we need. And I'll do the same for all four here. And again, this, uh, this, this measurement is actually, the half inch is to, is to this side of the hinge. So, um, so that first line is why it's exactly half an inch from the edge because it's to this part of the hinge and then the hinge goes on the other side of that line. So, um, so now we'll get this one and we'll do the same. We'll make sure we're marking uh, away from the half inch mark. Um, like so, put this on the line. And we can draw our line. And we'll go down here. Do the same. All right, so how we're gonna do this um, is uh, I've got a really, I've got a nice, really straight piece of lumber here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this, um, I'm gonna put this against, like I'm just gonna just barely cover my line um, with it. And I just wanna make sure I got my cross members uh, here so I, know where I'm going. All right, so we're just going to come over and we're just going to cover the line a little bit here on both, both sides. This one where it belongs, right there. This one here is good. All right. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here and clamp this. on it. This one's got to come back just a touch. Right there. All right, then I'm gonna flip this over like so. And it gives me a nice uh, elevation there. And then we're gonna take out this machine. So I picked up a, uh, a multi-tool just for this purpose. Um, this, 
particular piece of metal is not, um, this cutter is not wide enough to, to actually do um, the whole thing. So what we'll end up doing is we'll do the we'll do this side, and we're gonna we're gonna press this right against our board here, um, right against this board, and then we will be cutting um, directly into in through our piece here. We just cut all the way through it, and then we'll actually take our straight board, we'll flip it over and put it on the other side, and we'll just cover the line, and then we will cut uh, we'll cut that slot, and we'll be. Uh, We'll be all good there, so. All right, let me get a battery. All right, so let's give this a go here and see what we get. so you can see my uh, slot there and you can see that the hinge just doesn't quite uh, well let me sh actually show it to you where you can see it um, you can see that it just doesn't quite fit so um, all I have to do is flip this board over um, to the other side and then just barely cover this line um, just cover this line up right there and then we'll get our clamps in place I did um, is I switched to I switched to a uh, Milwaukee um, a Milwaukee blade and this actually made um, much quicker work of it it just went right through um, at first I was just using the blade that came with the uh, Ryobi um, and uh, that one that one wasn't doing so great it just took a while I mean it did fine but it took a while the the uh, the other one was much cleaner, um, so that one goes in the trash. And uh, in case you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using this one, uh, which actually works for fast wood cutting. Works great. So, um, all right, now. Now that we got that, um, let's slip in a couple of hinges here. Um, And then I'll just take the, take the top here, just line it up. go and that's how she turns so uh, not sure what 
what degree that is, although I still have to stand off a, a sixteenth of an inch total um, from where I'm at. So, and I'm just kind of sighting down the sighting down the line here, and um, everything is like really close. Uh, the members are nice and tight together, so no issue there. And uh, yeah, so now, now is the task of figuring out um, how to actually drill through the hinge. How to actually drill through the hinge so so that everything matches up. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, now the task is gonna be to actually take this hinge out and uh, and then get it aligned where it goes which it comes right to the bottom of the rudder. I'm just gonna leave that one in place and we're gonna have to reposition, the, get the top position where it goes here. Yeah, just working, so I'm gonna give you a kind of a broader view of what I'm working on here. Um, I'm just gonna get this up here where it's where it belongs. Just like right there. I'm gonna throw a clamp in the top just for now. that in position while we work with this. Now the, uh, the hinge gets this um, 0.8 millimeter um, wood on either side and so how I, how I think I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually, um, I'm just going to tack, see if I can tack glue this plywood to either side here, um, just with a little, just a little bit of CA, if I can just get it to hold in place, and then I'll be able to get my uh, hinge in there. It's either either tacking it there or tacking it here, and I think it's probably better. I don't risk gluing in a pin, so um, I think it's it's better if I tack it here. To have that those shims in there. So let me just grab a little glue here, chiseled out, sanded out, one way or another. It'll come out. Okay. All right, so I've got that shim in there, and now all I have to do is put my hinge on here and um, just bring that in so that it's laying against those uh, those shims. And then I can mark, make sure that shim's up high enough there. Got the space. And that's where we have to, uh, that's where we've got to drill through, um, straight through. Um, we'll have to figure out how we're going to keep this thing level um, while we accomplish that. But um, I'm going to peel the two 
uh, pieces of plywood from here and then we'll move them up um, to the other location or maybe I'll just cut two more actually and we'll get those up here and uh, I'll get these holes marked and then we'll know where we need to drill and then we uh, hope and pray everything uh, everything lines up so all right all right, so I've got the uh, I've got the four of these. Um, I've got these holes and these holes ready to drill. And what I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today um, before I get into that. But um, it was really really good to get um, get all of our hinges drilled. Um, these two hinges, uh, let's see here, that one's in. This is the one for the top. It's important to keep these uh, keep these in order. Um, so nothing gets uh, nothing gets mixed up uh, because uh, we don't want to do that. So, and I was just thinking about the fact that I may actually have an, a little bit of an issue anyway. I actually think I'm gonna to have to do these holes from the other side because this is the orientation of the hinge it it goes like that um, and I actually did my holes like that so the match is not gonna be not gonna be there so I'm gonna to have to actually go to the other side reattach my two little pieces of uh, 0.8 ply and do my holes from the other side because these were both done in this orientation and then they're flipped over so um, I hope you understand what I'm saying uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross out these holes so I don't accidentally think they're the they're the ones I'm gonna have to do because I actually need to go to the other side um, and do that but hey that'll be for tomorrow so um, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it, as you know. And um, had a uh, this is a really good day today. I mean, figuring out how to get this uh, slot for the hinge, um, the uh, multi-tool made uh, very quick work of it, especially with the uh, Milwaukee blade. And uh, yeah, so uh, hey, I'll catch you later.